Today on the Comic Book Show, Comic Fest, Comic Fest, Demolition Man. Welcome to the Comic Book Show, the only TV show about comics. Your central authority for cartoons, comic books, and collectibles, and Comic Fest. Welcome to the big Comic Fest show. I'm your host, Tony. And I'm Nikki, Tony's co-host. And this is show number five, October 30th, 1993. Let's get right into the super movie. Today's super movie is Demolition Man, Fly vs. Night. Here's some clips. Maniac is imminent. Request advice. With a firm tone of voice. Demand maniac lie down with hands behind back. Simon Phoenix, lie down with your hands behind your back. What's this? Six of you, such nice, tidy uniforms. Oh, I'm so scared. What, you guys don't have sarcasm anymore? Maniac has responded with a scornful remark. Approach and repeat ultimatum in an even firmer tone of voice. Add the words, or else. Simon Phoenix! Lie down on the ground, or else. Demolition Man, for me, was a fantastic movie. I mean, honestly, I have not seen a movie this good since Cameron's Terminator 2. I mean, Snipes was had the best lines, the funniest joke, that he was still this real bad, evil guy, and Sylvester Stallone was just so good in this movie, so tough. Hey. You just like this butt. <laughs> I mean, I, I like Snipes, too. I think he really stole the movie. He was the funniest thing in this movie. I think, I think Stallone was his typical gr grim self, uh, sort of moping around the movie, uh, not really uh, doing anything different that I've seen from him. Um, Sylvester Stallone... I don't know. His fight scenes are always the same. The bad guy beats the hell out of him, and then at the last two seconds of the fight, he somehow turns around and, and beats him. Uh, there was also uh, plots and plot holes in this movie that you could drive a truck through, uh, but it's entertaining enough that you could pretty much ignore them. So let's rate this sucker on the Mighty Meter. The Mighty Meter rates things from one to five, five being mighty good and one being mighty lousy. I'm going to give Demolition Man a four and a half. I'll give it a four and a half, too, only because they never did explain how the three seashells work. I can't believe you compared it to <laughs> Terminator 2, which, which on my scale would, would hey, rate like me. a nine. If you want to talk about uh, holes in the plot, watch Terminator oh, 2. Oh, please. I don't even want to get into the Terminator <laughs> argument. The whole time travel thing makes my head explode. Let's get into the Comic Fest footage. That's what this show is all about, Comic Fest. We went to Comic Fest. We interviewed just about everybody there. Um, We've got great interviews with comic book artists, uh, celebrities, uh, beautiful women in tight outfits. Kyle from Image Comics. <laughs> uh, Kyle from Image Comics. And uh, here it is. booth with Palmiotti and Casada, uh, the men, the myth, the legend. That's right. Uh, well, we got too many people. We have to go by last names. And K. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, what do you guys uh, uh, explain to the fans, uh, maybe people who don't know you guys, uh, some of the projects you've been working on, some uh, pretty important projects. Ninja. I guess you could. Yeah, Ninjak. Ninjak and and we're working on Ninjak. And uh, also, I have working. I'm working on Ninjak too. And the upcoming Ninjak project, which comes out in November which is probably in November. 
Right. Uh, I designed the new Batman. See, so actually I designed Azrael, who became the new Batman, and then I did the cover to Batman 500. Uh, was it your decision to make Azrael the Batman? Uh, no, they, they came to me with the idea for Azrael. Uh, the, the pitch was, you do Azrael, he becomes the next Batman, do you want to do it? I said, okay. You know. So you knew right from the beginning that uh, Azrael was going to be the new Batman? Yeah, about a, about a year and a half before it actually happened, you know, I knew about it and had to keep my mouth shut. So then you know what's going to happen to Azrael in the future? Yes. So what happened? I'm going to tell you. <laughs> uh, I'm doing, uh, I'm making X for uh, Dark Horse Comics. And so you'll be working regularly on a title? Oh, uh, yeah, monthly. Plus, I'm still doing, I do, do solo monthly and um, anchor. And uh, I have an upcoming Thanos book that I'm doing, just issue one. That's all they wanted me for. But what's the deal with uh, Ninjak? What's like his powers? All right. He has no powers. Uh, Ninjak, it's imagine, all right, imagine taking Bruce Lee, mm -hmm. Batman, and James Bond and smashing them all together. Uh, you know, he's, he's a magnificent detective and, and of course, womanizer, he, womanizer yeah. and uh, just like, you know, one of the world's greatest samurai swordsman ninja kind of guys. Sherlock you know? Holmes, everything. Sure, yeah. he's, everything. Every, he's everything. He's you. He's Great. It could be. It could be. Uh, is there any talk of uh, Ninjak crossovers? Uh, Ninjak versus Batman, something like that? Uh, no, nothing like that. They, what we have planned... See, after... This is great. After Ninjak 1 and 2 come out, like, one after... Then, then 3 comes out. Somewhere along the line, around 5, I think he actually meets Exo Man of War, uh, which is going to be a, a lot, lot of fun. fun yeah, you know? yeah. Visually. Exo is kind of like... like Conan Man and Iron Man and, and, yeah. smashed together. Right, Man into, in a Can. Right. Yeah. Paul Miotti and Casada uh, here at Comic Fest. Let's go to the other side of Fest and see what Nikki's doing. Now we're here with Tony Isabella. Hi, how are you, Tony? Real good. How are you? Good. So tell me, how did you actually get started into the comic book industry? I learned to uh, read from comic books uh, before I even went to kindergarten. And somewhere around sixth or seventh grade, uh, I realized that people got paid for writing comic books and couldn't think of a better way of making a living. Okay. Tell me about Satan Six. What, what is this book about? Satan Six is about uh, a group of lost souls who aren't good enough to be in heaven, aren't bad enough to go to hell. So uh, they made a deal with the devil to win souls for Satan in order to earn their way into hell. Uh, it's an action comedy book. Um, think of it as Gilligan's Island. Uh, in the supernatural. Just as Gilligan and crew never get off the island, Satan Six and crew never actually win a soul for Satan. Oh, great. What was it like working with the infamous Jack Kirby on this project? Well, Jack is one of the men that got me into comics, his early work uh, for Marvel Comics. And Jack has always been one of the most generous uh, men in comics. He had uh, written and drawn eight pages of a Satan Six story, basically handed them off to me and said, go with it. So I pretty much developed the series from Jack's original concept and those eight pages. Are there any other industry greats that really influenced you to, to get into comics? Oh, sure. Uh, Stan Lee, uh, who worked with Jack Kirby on the Marvel stuff. Stan and Jack were my biggest influences. If it weren't for them, I wouldn't have uh, gone into the comic field. And Stan was my first boss in comics. I started at Marvel Comics. And along the years, I had gotten to work with all of the original Marvel artists except Jack Kirby. Oh. He was never at Marvel at the same time I was. Uh, but thanks to editor Jim Salicroft from Tops, I finally got to complete my set, as it were, and work with Jack. That's it for Tony Isabella and the Tops booth. Oh, Gumby, come on, knock it off. Oh, come on. Gumby, let go. Gumby, you're not supposed to do this. Come on. Oh, Gumby. Oh, come on. Oh. Today's most popular superheroes. Saturday morning's hottest TV show. And America's favorite comic books. Marvel Comics X-Men. Head-banging, pulse-racing action. Isn't it time to see what the shouting's all about? 
Available at Amazing Comics, 928 Fitzwater in Philadelphia. Hey, where do you race? Golden Hobbies! Golden Hobbies, the place to race on Aerial Road in Pine Hill. Radio-controlled cars and trucks is just the beginning. Indoor and outdoor tracks, radio-controlled cars and accessories. Parts and servicing, weekly races, monthly and annual championships. Bring the family. Golden Hobbies is the place to race. Mention this ad and register to win a radio-controlled car. For the best selection in mainstream and independent comics, visit the comic collection on Bustleton Avenue and Straight Road in Feasterville. We have the largest back stock variety in the area. Reliable subscription service, used and new compact discs, and a full range of comic-related merchandise. Our courteous staff is available to answer all of your questions. Mention this comic book show ad and first-time customers receive a free issue of Legends of the Dark Knight. That's the comic collection in Feasterville for the serious comic book collector. DC. Incredible. Action. Astonishing. Adventure. The coolest hero. The hottest heroine. And the most outrageous villain for TV in the universe. These ain't your daddy's comic books, fanboy. The DC Comics. Available at Marvel Comics in Princeton and New Brunswick. Welcome back to the comic book show. Thanks for waiting. Now we are here with Norm Brayfogel, famous right now for Prime from Malibu. How you doing, Norm? I'm doing pretty good. Great. Now tell me about Prime, what you're doing for Malibu. What, what's this all about? It looks great and great story. I guess Prime could best be described as a modern-day Captain of uh, Marvel or Captain of... Um, the guy that said Shazam. Yeah, Captain Marvel. <laughs> he, he was a, he's a 13-year-old kid, and uh, instead of um, having a lightning bolt come down and having a magical origin, it's a pseudo-scientific origin. And uh, he, was, he was one of about 80 or 90 children that were experimented on back in the 60s in a secret government experiment with um, what they call a wetware virus, which is one of, the con one of the science fiction concepts that revolve around in the Ultraverse and are responsible for a number of different superheroes and villains. And, um, and when he reached um, pubescence, um, spontaneously he, he exploded into prime. And uh, this body comes blowing out of his chest and forms around him, costume and all. And then, and, uh, then uh, inside the prime body, Kevin is still in there, but it's like his nervous system switches off at a certain point in the transformation, and uh, Prime's kicks in. They share the same memories and the same brain and everything. He doesn't gain the wisdom of Solomon like Billy Batson did when he changed into Captain Marvel. It's like a grittier version of Captain Marvel. What made you want to get in the comics industry in the first place? Ah, huh, good question. Um, before I could read, I remember my mother reading Superman and Batman comics to me, and of course there was the... Superman and Batman TV shows, but it was basically that. Um, that's why I was into DC instead of Marvel more when I was a kid, too, just because Marvel didn't have a lot of uh, um, multimedia marketing like DC did at the time. Are there any other people in the industry that influence you or that you look up to? Certainly. Um, before that, however, my dad used to draw Superman for me when I was really young, and that must have had a big influence on me, too, made me want to draw. And um, Maybe it's genetic, who knows, maybe it's cultural. We were, we're a very visual culture, but I wanted to draw all along, and uh, I wanted to do it as a hobby. I wanted to be an astronomer, get into the nat natural sciences, but um, once I realized that I'd put a lot of effort and, and uh, developed a certain amount in, in my drawing ability, I decided I should make that a career. Well, Neil Adams was an influence. Frank Miller was an influence for a while. Um, Bernie Wrightson. Uh, uh, the classics as well. Uh, I used to have, have a subscription to American Artist magazine when I was uh, in grade school, and that influenced me a lot. I love doing full-color paintings. Um, the classics, you know, Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo. Um, the Impressionists made a big impression on me. Norm Brayfogel, Prime, Metaphysique coming out, all kinds of great stuff. Check it out. He's one of the best in the industry today. Okay, I'm over here at the uh, ElfQuest booth with Richard and Wendy Peeney, uh, the two people who are behind the ElfQuest. You can't, you are like the king and queen of elves. Is, is that basically correct? I, I think that's a fair assumption, yes. That's true. There have been elves before, but there have never been elves like ours. Well, why don't you tell uh, everybody out there, uh, give us a little background on ElfQuest. I know you guys have been around for like 15 years. Oh, Lord. Well, 25 words or less, what ElfQuest is about is we have a group of characters. They're not native to this very primitive world. They come here from somewhere else, and everybody hates them. 
so the quest of the title, at least the original one, is their search for a safe place to live. And in the process of many, many issues that span many years of, of comics, um, they discover that the safe place is wherever they are because they've found their home in themselves. And that's ElfQuest. We're, we're a very evenly divided team uh, when we created ElfQuest back in 1977. Uh, it, it pretty much fell into the pattern that I was the... Um, essentially, I came up with a skeleton idea for the story, and then Richard and I would co-plot it, I would script it, I would draw it, I would pencil it, I would letter it, I would do everything. And uh, Richard would then would edit it and publish it. And we learned all of it from the seat of our pants. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the upcoming projects for ElfQuest. Uh, I understand there's going to be a movie. Well, the, the list is uh, almost too numerous to mention, but uh, since you brought up the movie, we'll talk about that first. We just recently closed a movie development deal with Ed Pressman, the producer of, oh goodness, the two Conan films, Wall Street, um, any number of Oliver Stone films. Uh, he's also producing um, a Judge Dredd film, and The Crow is going to be released soon. Well. For most of our 15 years, it was Wendy and I, and we would put out one title, and in the beginning, we put out one title every four months, and it drove fans mad waiting for it, and we stepped that up to bi-monthly, but just recently, we decided to expand the universe of ElfQuest to let other artists and writers uh, work in it, because we'd gotten expressions of interest from people. So, uh, we now have the original ElfQuest title, which is called ElfQuest Hidden Years, which is an ongoing story. We spun off something called ElfQuest New Blood, which is going to take some of the characters from Hidden Years and spin them off on their own adventure. We have a third title called Blood of Ten Chiefs, which are adaptations of short stories written by various science fiction and fantasy authors. And in December, we'll have a fourth ElfQuest title called Wave Dancers, which follows the adventures of um, a, a group that split off right from the beginning and went to live in the sea. And um, it's, 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 we like to call it Little Mermaid on steroids because it's, it's, it's a, a very sensuous, very, very well-drawn uh, series about these underwater creatures. Well, that's it from the ElfQuest booth. Uh, let's go around to, to the fest. We're here at the Comic Fest. This is day four. Day four, day five, I don't know. It's the last day, and I'm very <laughs> tired. Uh, so let's, let's go see what Nikki's doing. Comic Fest 93 is continuing, and are you ready for this? We have now reached the booth of Defiant, yes, and we are now joined by Jim Shooter. Hi, Jim, how you doing? Good, Nikki, how are you? Good. So tell me about Defiant. What, what really is this company all about? Well, Defiant is about the realization of dreams. Uh, it's, it's a bunch of people, all of them who have been through a lot in their lives, but still have that fire in the belly and want to do it right, and, and uh, so it's a bunch of people who are old enough to know how to do it and young enough to still be able to do it, and, and we're really putting it together here and building a universe. What do you think Defiant has to offer comic book readers that other companies don't? I think that, I think that we're the storytellers. I think that, uh, you know, uh, when I started my last company, uh, the, 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 the business had gone in the direction of just doing collectibles and holograms and stuff, and we started doing story again because that's what my, all my training is, all my background is, and, and it was a success, and I think that with the same people who have gathered again to build this company and, and we've gotten even some more people who I think are the, the business's greatest storytellers, guys like Chris Claremont, Len Wein, Dave Cockrum, people who, uh, who are franchise builders, people who, are, who, who build universes and build worlds and, and love to work in continuity with each other. And, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we're, we're the team to beat. We have, uh, we have all the, the, the best storytellers in the business, uh, and the best creators in the business, guys like Alan Weiss and guys like David Lapham and, and, uh, 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 and Jan Childress, who's here, uh, who's working on The Good Guys with us, and, and uh, an artist named Gray, who won't let me use his real name. <laughs> but we have some great people, and, you know, I think it's, it's, it's all coming together. What made you want to get started in comics in the first place? Well, when I was 13 years old, I needed to make some money, and uh, <laughs> they wouldn't give me a job at the steel mill, you know? So I, I said, well, gee, what can I do? And I, I, I decided I could, you know, I love comics, and maybe I could uh, do a comic book that I could sell. And I did, and, and, and DC Comics bought it. I started writing Superman, and, uh, you know, and then learned from experts in the field. was taught by Mort Weisinger and Stanley, worked my way up through uh, the business until I was editor-in-chief of Marvel, and then I started my own company, and, and now... I, I started this company. Which There's a little bit of controversy about Warriors of Plasma. Any comments about this lawsuit thing that Marvel Comics seems to uh, be real happy to publicize about lately? 
Well, we've, uh, we were sued by Marvel. They, they said that they had a character called Plasma, which hasn't seen print yet, and they sued us that, that we were infringing on their name. Uh, in fact, we got the verdict last week, and the verdict is we win. Marvel was slammed down on every point. The judge found in our favor on every single point, and when he was all done reading his verdict, he, he said to their lawyer, haven't we had about enough of this? Right. I said, yes. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, goodness and virtue triumph again. Well, that's it for Defiant. They're victorious. Come check this stuff out. Jim Shooter, Nikki, Comic Fest 93. Hi, from the Comic Fest, and the Comic Book Show will be right back. The Comic Book Show is sponsored in part by... Master Shook Sports Cards and Comic Books in the Frankfurt Health Family Fun Center in Philadelphia. Mention TCBS and receive 20% off purchases of $10 or more. Call 533-0443. The Comic Book Show gets all its costumes from Captain Costumes. 412 Whitehorse Pike in Stratford, New Jersey. Call 609-783-9852. Captain Costume! Have you called Bill Cole Enterprises yet? Have you? You have not? Well, you better call them because they make Mylar Snugs and comic book preservation supplies. Bill Cole Enterprises. These are the same people that supply the Library of Congress and the National Archives. They don't mess around. They keep the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence fresh. Think of what they could do for your comic books. And not just Mylar Snugs, no, no. Acid-free backing boards, boxes, Mylites for every age of comic book. Everything is color-coded, so you don't get confused. Blue for Silver and Golden Age, black for current comics, and even purple for magazines. And now they have Mylar Snugs for ash cans. Will you listen to me? Ash cans! Bill Cole Enterprises, available at your local comic book store, or send away for their free catalog of preservation supplies. It's free. You just have to write them a letter. Bill Cole Enterprises, P.O. Box 60, Department CD, Randolph, Massachusetts, 02368-0060. Or to place an order, call 617-986-2653. Bill Cole Enterprises. Ask for them. Ask for them. By name. <laughs> You've got to make a stand. That's what the X-Men are all about. Man or mutant, it's all the same. The fight against evil. Marvel Comics X-Men, today's most popular superheroes. Saturday morning, hottest TV show. And America's favorite comic books. Marvel Comics X-Men. Head-banging, pulse-racing action. Isn't it time to see what the shouting's all about? Available at Amazing Comics, 928 Fitzwater in Philadelphia. Welcome back to the comic book show. All right, we're sitting in the Batmobile now. We're going to give you a little tour. Uh, this is the original Batmobile. It was uh, salvaged uh, from a junkyard and uh, all refurbished. And you can see uh, some of the cool things they have in the car. That's the turn button that used to turn the car completely around. Uh, smoke bomb, of course, the anti-theft device, which I believe was the ejection seat. Some other buttons here. Uh, I got like a speed racer thing going on the uh, steering wheel, which is kind of cool. Let's see if the horn works. No, nope. Batman's got to fix his horn. Uh, EMG lights, nail spread, oil squirt. Oh, and uh, we even got like a cassette radio in here, so Batman could listen to some tunes. Uh, what do you got on your side of the car, Nick? Over on uh, Robin's side of the car, we have the bat screen, the missing bat phone, the really cool radar scope. Um, looks like a LR left-right turn signal type thing. It kind of looks like an ashtray, a hazard light. And a really cool mat down here with the fluorescent orange bat. It's really cool. And uh, you can see in the back that Batman had Kenwood speakers, so Batman really know how to uh, uh, listen to some tunes if he wanted to. Uh, let's swing around the back. We can show that neat rocket part, and I'll see if I can get the thing to ignite. Um, I don't think there's any gas in this thing. Uh, <laughs> that's it for the Batmobile. Let's uh, walk around the fest and uh, check out some other stuff. Comic Fest 93 had something to offer everyone this year. Mark Schultz, the creator of Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, held the speech. Scott McLeod, the author of Understanding Comics, had his seminar. Harlan Ellison gave a speech to benefit the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund. And Jim Shooter held a seminar on how to create your own comic book, which also benefited the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund. Malibu hosted a casino night for its VIP guests and retailers. But the two biggest events of the Comic Fest were the Wizard Awards, which honored industry professionals, and the debate between Spawn's creator Todd McFarlane and writer Peter David. There's a good reason that Todd is wearing a towel. 
Well, that's right. Comic Fest 93 on the Mighty Meter. The Mighty Meter rates things from 1 to 5, and I'm going to give Comic Fest a 4.5 only because parking was a nightmare. It was my first big fest. Uh, I enjoyed it. I will give Comic Fest the same as Tony, a 4 and a half because it was, I mean, it was really great. It was a great show. They didn't get the 70,000 they were aiming for, but a lot of great talent. The programs were great. Jim Shooter's seminar was so cool. And it was nice to have such a good show, such a big show, so close to home. Yeah, it's officially the largest in the country now. Yeah. Uh, the final total was 31,660 people showed up for the big fest. The comic book show will we'll be, be right, right back. back. Hey, where do you race? Golden Hobbies! Golden Hobbies, the place to race on Aerial Road in Pine Hill. Radio-controlled cars and trucks is just the beginning. Indoor and outdoor tracks, radio-controlled cars and accessories, parts and servicing, weekly races, monthly and annual championships. Bring the family. Golden Hobbies is the place to race. Mention this ad and register to win a radio-controlled car. You gotta fight hate. You gotta make a stand. That's what the X-Men are all about. Man or mutant, it's all the same. The fight against evil. Marvel Comics X-Men, today's most popular superheroes. Saturday morning, hottest TV show. And America's favorite comic books. Marvel Comics X-Men. Head-banging, pulse-racing action. Isn't it time to see what the shouting's all about? Available at Amazing Comics, 928 Fitzwater in Philadelphia. Welcome to Celebrity Corner. I'm here with Gary Delabate of the Howard Stern Show. Gary, I'd like to ask you uh, what sort of comics uh, you collect, what you, uh, if you collect them, and uh, uh, what sort of uh, comics that the crew of the Howard Stern Show collects. Well, I'm not, I'm not really that much of a comic book collector. I'm more of an animation art collector, but uh, is Mad Magazine a comic? Yeah. I like that, man. I can read that forever, man. That was, that's like everybody's childhood. I think Howard likes to look at Superman and, uh, and um, uh, Spider-Man. He likes mostly that sort of stuff. What are some of the animation cells that you uh, have in your collection? Oh, a very vast collection. I'm a big Warner Brothers collector. I have um, a bunch of Bugs Bunnies, Chris Freeling. I have some um, uh, Bob Clampets. Uh, I, have a, I have a Marvel Martian, like the shirt says. I've got uh, uh, Gossamer, which is the monster, you know, the big red, red-headed monster with the tennis sneakers. And then I have a bunch of Hanna-Barbera, but um, the best cell I have is I was out in Hanna-Barbera out in Los Angeles, and they made a cell for me. It's a... Uh, Baba Louie, Quick Joe McGraw, and myself all in one cell. And then I met, oh, wow. uh, I met Joe Barbera and Bill Hanna, and they signed it for me. That's, that's the one that's my favorite oh, wow. one. That's it this week for the comic book show. Tune in next week. We're going to have more Comic Fest footage. And we'll be reviewing MST 3000, so all you Misties be watching. And for all you Image fans, an interview with Todd McFarlane. Great interview. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bill Cole Enterprises is the exclusive supplier of comic book preservation supplies to the comic book show. Ask for their products by name. And remember, when you go to your local comic store, say you saw it on the comic book show. Oh my god, this comic fest is killing me. I'm so tired. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where's the equipment? Gary! Hold on, I'm coming, Bob. <laughs>